What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, well, you've come to the right place. So, when it comes to the administration side of YouTube, it really does seem to be a mess, don't it? I wouldn't know much about it myself, I'm still at the point where I've kind of yet to carve out a place for myself on the side, but I hear a lot about the nightmares that a lot of creators, even the bigger ones with millions of subs have to go through, what with people doing everything they possibly can to make sure that their videos fall in line with TOS and monetization guidelines only to get falsely flagged or given a yellow or red dollar sign, often with little reason given. And while I don't know much about the logistics of running a business, I think we can all agree that it's laughable that we've got what has to be the biggest company in the world and they can't even straighten out what seems to be one of the most basic issues on the platform. Yeah, they're too busy with removing dislikes or making changes that, you know, no one actually wants. It's damn frustrating and I get it. And I guess that's what spurred on the creation of this video made by Mama Max titled pick a side YouTube. I guess the context for this was that Max uploaded a video about some pedo ring on high MVU. It's one of those like social metaverse games. You make an avatar and interact with other players. It went into detail about a player who apparently groomed a lot of children. Something like that. What sets the scene for this video however was that this video was taken down for violating the TOS, the part regarding nudity. Apparently it showed a nude character with his um, you no, know, rear end showing, which was apparently quote, sexually gratifying content, unquote. And obviously that don't make much sense just going by the context of the video I think it's safe to assume that you're not meant to wank to it adding to that the video was age restricted anyway so why does it really matter if there's a few seconds of a bare rear end but yeah in any case let's jump into the video naturally I'll be skipping over to the more interesting bits while cutting out what I don't really have any commentary for but I will do my best to maintain the integrity of the video I'll say right now though I really can't take any of this video seriously I'm sorry I just can't he uses this, this really dumb voice throughout all of it. Just fucking kidding. How many bloody times do we have to do this dance? You fuck with us. We fuck with you. I know glass house throwing stones, but I'm not the one trying to get people on a bandwagon. Apparently, it's something that... Uh, I think they call themselves DarkTube or whatever, they use that voice and like, I don't know, I guess if they want to use it for their normal videos or whatever, just to kind of set the scene right, set up an atmosphere, I suppose there ain't nothing wrong with that. But if you're gonna make a video that's, well, kind of like a call to arms, you're calling for people to rise up and speak out, not to mention the heavy allegations, well, I don't think it would come as a shock to know that there are people who listen to this really awful voice and think, my god, what a fink. It doesn't really help that he swears like every other sentence. But no matter how vital the video may be to them, you take down our shit. Like, what am I supposed to think? Wow, that's so dark and broody, man. No, I just think it's childish. About two thirds of the video is some other YouTubers like The Right Opinion, Bo Blacks, and some ordinary gamers talking about their thoughts on the platform and what they're doing wrong. I don't really have much to say about this part, although there is something that raised my eyebrows. Before the segment starts, there's text that reads, The views and opinions expressed are those of the following people and do not necessarily reflect my policy or position, and vice versa. That's understandable. They also don't exactly know what I intend to do with this video, so all accountability and any consequences that this video may cause should fall upon me and me alone. This is extremely irresponsible. As we'll see later down the line, Max did something that I think is incredibly risky and very well could have put the reputations of the people who took part in peril. Now, it's not my place to speak for the folks in the video, and I ain't gonna, but this situation went sideways. I'm not sure if a disclaimer is really gonna do much to exonerate you. You would have essentially thrown these guys under the bus by not telling them of your full intentions. That blood would have been on your hands, Max. Now, the video was received very positively, and goddamn, Max, you are lucky for that, but the fact remains, this was a risk that did not need to be taken, and as such, shame on Max for doing so. Again, I don't have much to say about this segment, although there were bits of it that I found interesting. If there's something that the internet has shown us time and time again in regards to independent investigations, it's that the average person can notice something that an investigator might miss the first or second time. And as such, investigative content should really be encouraged. But I mean, should it though? I mean, look, I'm not dogging on this sort of content. I do appreciate the work you do. It's gotta be real tax and getting everything in line. But to say that it should be encouraged, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. I mean, not everyone's set out for it. All it really takes is for a few loonies to do some quote-unquote investigative work and unjustly ruin some people's reputation. 
Hell, that would give YouTube even more of a reason to crack down on this content. I'm just trying to say, this sort of work really ain't for everyone. I really wouldn't say that it should necessarily be encouraged. I don't think it should be discouraged, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think it's something for everyone. And there were some of them that said that we ought to hire more like humans run the site, not just bots. 90% of the issues with YouTube could be resolved if Google just hired a team of real people to look over and see uh, what's actually being done than what's just being reported. You know, YouTube was actually a place for people to create back in the day. I mean, actually hire people to review and moderate videos, not auto-moderated robots. You know, I don't need like fucking R2D2 over here telling me that my info or any other creator's info is invaluable to a cause when there's actual victims on the line. And I just kind of think this demonstrates a lack of knowledge when it comes to uh, the logistics of running a business. Yeah, a human team would probably work wonders for this site. That is, if they don't let their biases get in the way, right? But consider this, there's so much content that gets uploaded in a day, you'd have to hire, I don't even know, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. You'd have to give them a place to work, you'd have to give them pay and all that stuff. I just don't think it would work, and I'm not even sure if it's worth it. Personally, I think the labor would be better spent elsewhere rather than watching hours of content every day, but that's just my own reservations. It doesn't really matter if these investigative pieces could actually help real law enforcement with actual crimes. I don't know if there's ever been a happening where like a YouTube video like actually got a predator arrested or I'm willing to believe it happened, don't get me wrong, but then again, couldn't the opposite also happen? I mean, just look at what happened to EDP 445. Sure, the guy's life is a living hell right now, rightfully so, but thanks to several missteps taken by those who apprehended him, he walked. I don't know. I just think that whole point is, I think it goes both ways, right? Sure, it could help, but it could also harm, and that would reflect on YouTube as well. We do what we do to alert the public, warn the innocent, spread the word. But YouTube seems to punish the heroes and reward the villains cowering behind their screens. <laughs> Jesus, that's so edgy. You really want any normal person to take you seriously? This is not it, man. Like, do, do, do you think this makes you look cool? Like, if this was a movie, maybe, but this this is so cringeworthy, dude. Otherwise, a lot of these guys mostly go on about how YouTube is inconsistent with how it goes about enforcing the TOS and its guidelines, how exploitable some of the tools they give to flag content is, and how they seem to prioritize certain individuals and corporations over other YouTubers, which are all things that I agree with. We've seen it a lot of times. YouTube does seem to be very wishy-washy with this kind of stuff. And I mean, yeah, it's gotta stop. But now, here comes the meat and potatoes of the video. I could not agree more, my friends, but I'm worried that all of your wise words will go to waste if no one sees this. So let's all go ahead and forcefully drag everyone down with us. Oh, careful man, you might cut yourself and all that edge. Seriously, you sound like a cult leader. Like, maybe dial it back a bit? I mean, you're trying to do a good thing, right? So why are you making yourself sound like some sort of, like, movie villain? A very corny one at that. Starting with the following people. Susan Wojcicki. Stop fucking lying to us every time you have to give a statement in response to videos like mine. All these broken promises you've made that never come into fruition. All of these incessant changes that no one ever asked for or wanted. Take some goddamn accountability. We are so sick of seeing the malicious and deceitful words you and your company repeatedly propagate. Either do something good for this site once in your fruitless life, or step the fuck down. Alright, look, as fun as it is to bash on Susan, you guys do realize she's literally just like a mask for YouTube. She only acts as like the face right? She's really only good for PR. In reality, YouTube is just like any other corporation, a complex bureaucracy with shareholders and employees alike. She doesn't just say, okay, let's do this, this, and this, and the changes get hammered out. It's got to go through a set of votes and whatnot. People have got to agree to it. It takes time, but I digress. You're the investigative journalist here. What do I know? Philip DeFranco. Remember when you and your team ignored us last time during the whole answer us pedo tube thing because you were too busy talking about some stupid drama? I know I'm not as famous as you would like, but how about you do the right thing this time and fucking say something? I know you're on break, so it would mean even more to me for you to actually do something this time around. Jeez, this reeks of entitlement. Imagine being this arrogant dude 
At the end of the day, no matter how just you view your cause, you can't throw a fit when people say, yeah, I don't think I want to do that. And honestly, I wouldn't blame DeFranco for skipping down on this whole project based on how you went about it. But yeah, no matter how just you view your crusade, if people don't want to report on something, that's their choice. And if you keep hounding them about it, you just look real childish. And something I found funny is, he tries to get both H3H3 and Keemstar on board with this. Ethan Klein, Keemstar. Like, yeah, that's um not gonna work. Like, these guys have the biggest beef I've ever seen on the platform. I really have no idea why you think they'd both jump onto this. Scarce. Thanks so much for covering my story last time, brother. I desperately call upon you for help once again. <laughs> Jesus, is this guy a space marine? This radiates a pure LARP dude. Corpse, I know you have nothing to do with this, but with all of your power, influence, and the favor you owe me, I just couldn't help myself. So, remember when you reached out after years of not speaking to me while I was at the hospital tending to my sick girlfriend, and you kept trying to rush me home to do you a huge favor, and then you threw me under the bus for something you did, and at the same time acted like you were taking full responsibility for it. But I let you do it because I thought you were going to be my friend like you used to be, and then you stopped talking to me immediately after you were done using me. Yeah. So, how about you do me the fucking favor this time, and talk about something besides yourself for once? It will give you a good look. I promise. Okay, I don't really care about your, like, vendetta against Corpse Husband. Obviously, what he did, what with asking you to leave the hospital with your girlfriend, you know, to do some YouTube stuff, yeah, that's pretty badass, but you just look incredibly petty in this clip. As if it's less about, you know, using him to spread your message, and more about just trying to get your favor out of him. It, it, it just looks petty, I'm sorry. Because you never do anything until we start squeezing your balls. And this is the part where you come in, children. The links are in the description. I kindly ask you to come with me to make a fucking mess for the second time. I want you to pace this bitch until the world is nauseous from looking at it. I want you to drown out every trending topic so that even something like Spider-Man looks like a microscopic speck of dust compared to us. And tonight, you two will choose. Let die the pedophiles they love or suffer the little children. Wow, nice one dude. Accusing YouTube of straight up loving pedophiles. That is, wow. You'd better have some good evidence to back that up. Just because they take down videos exposing pedophiles, that ain't evidence. That is purely circumstantial. You say YouTube likes pedophiles, by extension, you are making these accusations at the higher-ups of the company, and maybe even the employees as well. This is unacceptable, and you should be ashamed. Suck lord, you pasty-looking bonk. You call yourself a journalist, an investigator of sorts, and you're throwing around these types of accusations. You're a joke, a hack, a fraud. This display of negligence is further compounded by this tweet. Hashtag pick a side YouTube, children or pedophiles. I don't like this tweet one bit, no siree. Obviously for the reasons I explained earlier, but because it's so divisive, he's courting his followers into this, if you're not with us, you're against this mindset. Which kind of leans into, if you don't agree with me, well, you're siding with the pedophiles. And so, if you rightfully criticize him, well, his followers immediately go hostile. Don't believe me? Just look at what happened to Doc on the radio or DJ Screwdriver. Both criticized this video and gave fair and concrete points to back themselves, but their comment sections were soon raided by brainless Neanderthals who can't count to 11. No doubt because of this tweet that encouraged such divisiveness. Overall, the video presents a good message. We're sick of these vague descriptions of the terms of service and seemingly inconsistent enforcement of them, and something's gotta be done. Of course, no one would disagree with that. But he had to end it off by totally muddying the waters likely for publicity's sake with this nonsensical and frankly unhinged statement. Shame, shame, shame. The cringy voice and awful script don't help neither. Now, apparently all this did lead to a phone call with YouTube, as if you can call an entire company and he'll apparently be meeting with some representative to discuss the future of the platform. Whoop de dang do. I do wish him luck, but I'm not really holding my breath. That's all I've got for this shtick though. So do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.